the premise of my channel is that if I film as I'm working to show how I do things and why I do things the way I do, that other people might be interested in how I've achieved the results I get. And so this is not the video for the true beginner. There are so many resources who will show you how to get started free motioning. I'm Beth. Let's free motion quilt. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about my story. I sewed a lot of garments in high school and worked in a fabric store, but I never learned to quilt. I did really like to work with cotton, and so when I was much older and hadn't sewn for years, um, I didn't have a decent sewing machine in college. I didn't really make any clothes when I was in college. Here I was, 35 years old, and I wanted to learn how to do this tiny little quilting that I'd seen that I thought was so beautiful, um, which I know now is called stippling. And so uh, I went out and I bought myself a sewing machine, sort of on a lark. I just wanted to have a good sewing machine. My sister gave me, I believe it was 11 stars. Um, three of them are right here. They were hand-pieced by my grandmother on my mom's side um, years before and she was no longer with us but I wanted to make those stars into three wall hangings. This one that my daughter and I share, one for my mother and one for my sister who had given me the stars. And so I set about learning how to do some of these things and you can see it's not perfect. Um, but it is my first wall hanging and these areas were a little bit empty here so I just poked batting in through the back sort of like a trapunto and I figured out how to do some kind of a binding and learn some different techniques. I gave them their gifts and they both have them hanging in their homes and this one hangs in our back hallway next to our kitchen and it was a really rewarding way to start and so I encourage you anytime that you can add something personal to what you're doing to go for it. This project is to make a little table mat out of a fabric that you like, a print, and you can go ahead and use uh, two fat quarters, you can make it square, rectangular, whatever you would like. Pick a print that has a background and some areas of interest because what we're going to do is meander the background, which is like a stipple but larger, and then uh, sort of thread paint over the various elements. We want to get comfortable maneuvering around. On this project, I would like you to go fast and don't sweat the details. There's plenty of time to hold yourself to impossible standards once you get proficient. Your piece is going to look lovely, even if you drive onto your elements that you're going to thread paint a little bit and uh, don't do it perfectly. It's still going to be a lovely little piece that you can keep for yourself or give to someone. This happens to be two pieces of bark cloth that are pre-washed. My parents brought these uh, back from Hawaii for me uh, quite a long time ago, and I really like these fabrics. And I have a, one piece of warm and natural in between them. And so I'm going to quilt these together. And then I will do another tutorial showing how to bind that with a perfect binding um, and going around those corners. And to do that, we'll use the fusible thread that I talked about in the uh, other video that I did. So free motion quilting. Are you over on this? want some kind of a darning foot and this one has this metal type here which works well. I've gotten used to it. I used to prefer the clear type when I used my other machine but this I like. So if you are doing this project and you have a regular sewing machine so that you don't have a flat surface like this you probably want to base this somehow. Um, there are a lot of things you can do. There are products such as this, 505. There are lots of other products, I'm sure, that are great. This one's um, probably top of the line. 
Another possibility is the tried and true method of hand basting with contrasting thread. It may be obvious as you watch me doing this at 600% speed that I don't often do this. Um, but it's certainly a viable choice. I'm always looking for time saving methods because I sell what I make, but I would certainly do this for a gift or any kind of one off project. Another possibility that I also have never really used is to pin baste, but it's very common and so I thought I would show it here because it is something you might want to try. I've always worried that I would forget a pin was there and, uh, you know, quilt up too close to it. And so I prefer to baste with thread. So this is my other machine and I'm going to use the Vanish Extra Thread and put it in the bobbin. The bobbin thread is under a lot less stress than the top thread that has to go all the way through your machine and so it's a better place for this type of thing. And there's, there's more than one way to load your bobbin but this should be fine if you just do it the normal way that you're used to. I'm using my walking foot that's made for this kind of a quilt sandwich setup. I would never do this on something this small, although when I started I actually did go around the outside just with regular thread. This is white thread in the top because this is primarily a black th fabric. I would just go contrasting and I would go ahead and set needle down if you have it and make your stitch as long as it will go which on this machine is about a five you still filming? Mm -hmm. I like to this is my basting. I like to get this out of here because it's really a pain to pick it out later. And this is near the edge and I probably won't use this part, but just in case, I'm gonna get it out of my way. So I've gone and located my uh, pair of quilting gloves that I actually almost never use and I don't like to wear them in the summer because uh, it's just another layer of clothing. I tend to hold on to my quilt because I'm working usually fairly small. The largest I work is maybe three by four and a half feet. Uh, I can control that usually because I baste it and because I do have a big flat sewing surface but I encourage you to check these out. I've had more than one pair of these. I went through a lot of gardening gloves too, the kind with the little rubber nibs. And if you've ever uh, seen those great gloves that hand is dipped and is all rubberized, I've not tried those, but those might be awesome if you get those in the right size for your hands. And so I do recommend that you think about, uh, these are probably the Cadillac of quilting gloves. A dollar pair of gloves from your local hardware store might work, or the other gloves I mentioned. I'm going to go without. You can see there's that adhesive breaking off onto my work. I use a lot of lint rollers with what I'm doing, and so I buy them in the big uh, family pack. I thought it would be remiss if I didn't talk about what a good stitch looks like. And you can Google this and look at some diagrams of how the stitch is formed and why it looks that way. But right now I'm just going to show you. I'm hoping you can see this now because I've been showing it with a thread that was same top and bottom. But now I've got uh, contrasting threads. And I'm going to attempt to zoom this in. I always go the wrong direction. Okay, now you can see what I'm talking about where that bobbin thread, uh, which is tan here, just shows too much. And it's just not the look that we're after. It's sitting on, or it's coming up to loop around this rust colored thread that is sitting on top 
of our fabric, even with this thick quilt sandwich. And if you look at the other side, it looks pretty nice from, from this side, but we're not making a one-sided thing. We're going to have a two-sided thing, and we don't want every bit of our stitching to be incompetent. So we're going to loosen the top. If we loosen the top, then it will pull down further to mate with the bobbin thread within the sandwich and it won't show and I think I've done it enough let's let's test that I've gone the other direction. I'm gonna do that okay this looks pretty good on this side and on this side you can see that you can no longer see that tan thread I also wanted to mention that in extreme cases, if you can't get your stitch to look nice just by adjusting your top tension, you might have to adjust the tension on your bobbin case. There's a little screw, sometimes more than one screw, that you adjust to do that. I would consult your manual, the internet, um, your local sewing machine mechanic someone to get a little help with that because if you get it far enough out of uh, tension without a little bit of instruction uh, you might be sort of bummed out for a while. You'll get it figured out but uh, boy if you're in a hurry to get something done go ahead and get your manual out. Some ideas to make your early efforts successful. Matching your top thread and your bobbin thread can cover up a multitude of sins and so I advise that you do that. Also matching the color of your thread to your background fabric can help cover up mistakes. Variegated thread is beautiful and very forgiving when you free motion quilt with it. I use it almost exclusively on my wall hangings because it just really makes it less important that your stitching be perfect and it makes it look more artistic and I just like everything about it and so that's primarily what I use. A lighter thread than a regular sewing thread. This is regular sewing thread that I'm using here which is certainly uh, doable but a lighter thread, this is about a 40, a, a thread that is uh, 50 weight is a little thinner and can be a little more forgiving when you're free motion quilting. Busy fabrics uh, especially on your B side can help cover up problems. The main thing I can say though is practice, practice, practice. My dad always said practice made perfect and I've had a lot of practice at free motion quilting and in this instance it really is important and it really does build your skill level. I advise that you do scraps, small projects, Making Christmas presents is actually the best way that I know to improve your sewing skills. Somewhere around the 20th time you make something, you have an aha moment where you understand, I get it. If I tug on this a little bit as I round this corner, it shapes beautifully. If I do this at this point, it makes this part uh, just perform so much better. And so that repetition, I think, is very important, and you get that when you make Christmas gifts. Also, everyone quilts differently. It's not as different as snowflakes or fingerprints, but we each have our own style, and you will develop your own distinctive style where you will find yourself quilting shapes that you like over and over again, occasionally adding some new ones, Occasionally trying somebody else's look a little bit and deciding it's not for you, but it's one of those things that develops with time and you become less concerned about whether it looks right because you understand that it looks like you. When I want to see how a thread is going to look on my work, I will sometimes just get some of it like this and set it on there 
and see if I like it. How does it look? Does it show up? Does it blend in the amount I want? How does it appear? This has enough going on that I'm not sure what will give me the look I want. Generally, quilters are advised to work from the center out. Uh, that is especially important for things like bed quilts, I believe, which, believe me, I have never quilted anything as big as a bed quilt. Although many people look at my work and say, of course you have a long arm, and absolutely no, I do not have a long arm, as you can see. Other than that, uh, the two things I want to show you for sure are how we pull the thread up in the middle of the work where both pieces of thread are on top and then you start there with tiny stitches so it won't pull out and then work up to your the size stitch you want and I like to use those threads as a handle as I've said before and those tiny stitches are reliable as long as you don't just do a couple you know when you're starting out you want to do fairly long I would I'm not sure what they recommend if they say four or five stitches I tend to err on the side of caution I would probably do more like seven eight nine uh, real little ones and then go to the size you want some of the work I do I actually do the exact opposite of what quilters are advised to do most of my wall hangings I start at both ends and work towards the center rather than starting in the center and working out. Hopefully we'll get to the point where we start doing some of those kinds of pieces and you'll see why when we get there. You develop a real sense for how fast you're going and so you get real good at bringing your foot off the pedal and slowing down your hands at the same time but it's just a matter of practice. You need to work on it because how fast you move the fabric in tandem with how hard you're pushing your gas pedal controls the length of your stitch and you want those stitches to look uh, consistent. I'm always I'm guilty of being a little bit pleased when people say of course you have a stitch regulator. Um, no, I tried to sew with one once and it just beeped at me constantly because I was trying to go too fast. This machine goes 2,000 stitches per minute. My other machine, I believe, goes half that. And when I try to free motion quilt on that other machine now, I'm actually in danger of causing problems because I'm bored, because it's too slow. It's hard for me to get a nice stitch because I'm so used to going twice as fast. I'm not the person uh, to teach anyone how to piece when they're quilting. If you're interested in that, I'm sure there are lots of great resources um, elsewhere on YouTube. I've subscribed to a couple of sewing channels that I've been looking at recently. I've only watched a few minutes of their videos, but I wanted to get a sense of how people are doing this. And what I understood right away is that I'll be doing this differently probably at least than the ones I've run across but I did subscribe to a couple that I was sort of taken with for different reasons one of them is a quilt channel and you can see that in my subscriptions one of them is the the gentleman who is so enthusiastic about sewing that it just warms your heart and he's always got something fun and enthusiastic to say about sewing and I just think that's great and so I would direct you to those sorts of people if you want help with piecing uh, and also I would pay attention to what they say about free motion quilting because I tend to do things my own way I tend to have a different take on a lot of things and while I hope you're interested in what I have to say I don't begin to assume that I'm doing things the right way or the best way. They're just the right way for me. I wanted to show you what I mean by bringing your thread, your top thread, from the bobbin case. And here I am doing it in the course of showing something else. My machine likes to hold on to that top thread. And if I start sewing with it there, it just piles up thread and makes a big mess and jams up my machine. If your machine does this, you're probably used to pulling that out already. And so if you want to just 
uh, start up free motion quilting in another area without cutting your threads and pulling them back up to the top, you need to get a feel for whether that's free. And you'll know because the piece will pull around very easily without very much resistance. When it's caught in there, there's resistance and it doesn't want to pull because you have that extra top thread going back down, making it appear as if three threads are coming out of the bobbin. So here it is. I hope you can see it. Uh, so I always say it's not perfect, but um, I think if I trim it up and bind it, it's going to be a lovely little mat to put in the center of a table. I was initially making this for myself, but as I've been here sewing, um, I think I might send it to my mom when I'm done. She loves anything that has to do with Hawaii. It reminds her of dad. And uh, you can see I have a little thread pile up where I did those flowers that have the uh, five points for whoever can remember if that's the stamen or I'll have to Google that later and remember what flower part that is. But the, but the hibiscus uh, does have a rather pronounced and distinctive design and uh, I sure can live with it and I think my mother would love it. She has always used a lot of red in the house and she's gone with more blue and this would be kind of a nice compromise and have the Hawaiian theme that we all love so much uh, because my dad's family's from Hawaii. The truth is the first time I free motion quilted it was a disaster. I feel this is one area in my life that I actually have paid my dues. I've, having the little piece of work that I can quilt anyway, try new patterns and Sometimes I'll just start quilting in a way I never have, and then that eventually ends up on a wall hanging. Anything you can do with the point of your pencil without lifting it up, you can quilt. And there are all kinds of neat shapes you can do. My parting thoughts. Take your time. Speed is always an issue for me because of wanting my business to make sense and not just be totally ridiculous but um, please take your time and learn how to do this there are many many reasons that we sew we sew so that we'll have well-made things in our life we sew so that we can do constructive work with our hands to put part of ourselves into the world to create beauty we even sew to make a statement Free motioning can add another dimension to your work and to the beauty of your work. And so I really encourage you to take your time and learn how to do it. If you get a chance and you have a little person in your life, do make them a few garments from a pattern. Or uh, if you have a child who likes dolls, or if you still like dolls, make some doll clothes by hand. It will really help you understanding even if you're mending down the road or trying to alter a garment you'll understand so much more about how things go together and the shape of things if you've done that making something to fit a three-dimensional shape that is as complicated as the human body the piece I showed earlier with my grandmother's stars is probably the most elaborate piecing I've ever done maybe something close to it. I love traditional quilts. Both my grandmothers quilted. One was a Hawaiian quilter, the other one uh, was in the Midwest and did traditional quilting like the stars you saw. I love traditional quilts. I would give anything almost to have one of my grandmother's quilts. They both made beautiful things, but uh, you know that wasn't meant to be and I appreciate traditional quilting but it makes me it makes me disappointed in every little imperfection and that wasn't what I went to sewing for I want to follow out my mistakes 
into the new territory where they lead. Thirty-seven to go. <laughs> 